Hey friend. Yeah. Today we're gonna talk about business ideas. So maybe you're a person that really wants to be in business, but just don't feel like you have the right ideas. Today is the one for you. So stick around, let's roll into it. So Brooke, today's a fun episode because it's one of the main, like over on TikTok, if you don't know already, I have a TikTok account, I post a bunch of business content, and most of you are probably here because of that. But honestly, one of the main questions I get is how do I come up with an idea? How do I think of an idea? I want to be an entrepreneur, but none of my ideas are good. Like all of that stuff. So I've come up with some, I don't know, a few strategies that have helped me to train my brain to come up with ideas and think of more. And uh, I'm excited to chat about those today. Yeah, way pumped. This is one of the most fun things about having a business or making a product or um, planning an event. I think this is one of the coolest things. Uh, just coming up with something that'll fix a problem is so fun. And throughout history, I mean, you he- you always hear of these ideas of like, if you need to think of an idea, go to the shower. Or like, right. I know you were talking about earlier, Albert Einstein used to get ideas while he was shaving or whatever. Yep. But there's obviously pros to that where, so like Albert Einstein's a great example. If you're already thinking of math equations, then while you're shaving, that's something you can think about, right? If you're trying to solve a complex problem, but if you're trying to solve a problem with a business idea or a product, unless it's about shaving, you're probably not going to think of it (laughs) while you're shaving or while you're in the shower or these normal things. Maybe you can expand on those ideas. Totally. A lot of times I'll have the initial idea and then I'll expand on them during those times, but you're probably not going to come up with your billion dollar idea while you're brushing your teeth, you know? Totally. Yeah. And it, unless you are in the art of shaving business or like the <laughs> squeegee business, which I don't think squeegees yeah. are that good. So I'm really hoping that somebody Ooh. gets an idea in the shower. <laughs> Them's fighting words. I know. Wow. But totally agree. It's, uh, it's always funny to hear how other people think. For you, well, I'll let you tell yours. Mine is if I come up with an idea, then I like going on a walk. It's either a walk where I'm not listening to anything or I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast, usually marketing podcasts, and those will spark ideas. But for me, I have to be active and moving my body to get these ideas. That's just how my brain kicks into overdrive. You're way different. So tell me what you do to look for some good ideas. Well, and your initial idea, I'm sure, didn't come while walking. You're more talking about like expanding right, on those ideas. Right. Because I feel like the initial ideas typically come when you're living and looking for it, right? Yes. It comes from an everyday problem. Like it's usually not something small that you have that problem one time because you're not going to put all of your energy into one thing that happens to you once. It's an an occurrence usually. I mean, unless you do, unless you think, hey, this happens to this many people every day. Yeah, most of the time it's something that just annoys you over and over and over again. Or maybe you've heard multiple people talk about. So a great example is the very thing we're talking about. On TikTok, I've heard multiple people, a bunch of people asking me about business ideas. So all of a sudden, that's me thinking of an idea in daily life of how to solve this problem. Right. So the concept that I've kind of come up with to solve this problem is a concept I call three daily. So essentially what that is, is training your brain to think of business ideas on a daily basis while you're out and about. Because it's not just going to happen just because you want it to. But what I've started to do or what, I, what I've what i done in the past and what a lot of other people have done is write down three business ideas during the day, no matter what, even if they're stupid ideas, even if they don't matter, just start writing them down every day. And by the end of the day, you need at least three ideas. Now, what that does for you is it gets you looking for business ideas throughout the day and and trains your brain to look for them versus just living your life and hoping that it pops up. Right. Right. It's just a proactive way to start training your brain to think of it. And like you said, no matter how big or small the idea is, even if it's like a silly idea, you can write those down because like I've said before, I love Shark Tank and some of those things that actually get deals, I'm like, who, why? There's no way they're getting a deal. And then they do. There is a need for some of these weird, even funny ideas or ideas that I'm just like, oh, that will never work. And then you hear about their valuation 
and there's totally a need even for the silliest or like the weirdest ideas. Write them down for sure. And like you said, just getting into that mindset is huge because, of course, we all just want to come up with a million dollar idea, but you're not going to you might get it on the first try, but that would be really lucky if you just came up with you wrote one thing down and then that was the one thing. But yeah, getting into that mindset is huge. And really taking that and making like a full on list. So for me, I really like the idea of of writing everything down in a notebook. The problem is it's just a pain to carry a notebook everywhere. <laughs> like I like the physicalness of actually writing these ideas down. You can kind of expand on them within the right. notebook. Like you can draw pictures. There's great things about it. But I'll literally, I'll go like a week carrying my notebook every day and then I, it just dies out. And then like a month or two later, I'll pick it up again and I'll try it again. But more often than not, I do not have a notebook right. on me even though I really think that that's a good way to go about it. I totally. And then for me, that also goes into like forming a habit too. writing down habits and goals. They're way more likely to get done if you're writing them down. And that's just, I mean, it's cliche, but it's true. Writing those things down tangibly with a paper and a pen, even in your phone. But I've even heard some study that if you're writing something down, it just goes into your brain a lot easier. And the thing too that I try and do with that, there's obviously the three daily that I've organized. I think that's a good way to train your brain. But then also training your brain, you're not an entrepreneur because you have ideas. You're an entrepreneur because you act on ideas, right? So like I was having a conversation with my dad recently and he was like, I've realized I don't think I'm an entrepreneur. He's like, because I've never done anything about any of my ideas. And I think that's the difference of an idea person versus an entrepreneur. So an entrepreneur has that idea, mm. they act on it, they make it happen. So the controversial kind of little test that I do with myself is I have I give myself 24 hours after an idea that I have. And I have to do something with that idea within 24 hours. Whether that's starting to design the logo, whether that's uh, buying a domain name, whether that's drawing out the actual product idea. I give myself 24 hours to start doing something. You don't have to launch the brand, obviously, but do something with the idea within 24 hours. If it's not a good enough idea to do something with within 24 hours, forget the idea, scratch it. Just leave it on your list of three ideas for the day and move on. Because if it's a good enough idea that you are you can't help but act on it right away, then it's likely an idea solving problems that a lot of other people have. And like if you're excited about it and you're passionate about it, passionate enough to do something about it in that first 24 hours, I think you'll be way happy executing that idea. Not only is it a good idea, but you're pumped on it. So yeah. <laughs> absolutely act on it and be pumped on this idea. Yeah, because as an entrepreneur too, like you don't want to start a business that you hate because the odds of you running out of steam, very high. Like right. even things that you love, for instance, business idea, TikTok stuff right now. I'm so burnt out of TikTok, but I've set the goal that I'll post three times a day. I have faith that it'll, you know, that it'll continue growing, that I'm helping people and that it's great. But even though I love that, my favorite thing to do is talk about business with people. I'm like pretty burnt out, you know, and totally. I can't imagine if it's something that I really hated or thought was stupid, but thought maybe I could get a cash grab with it, trying to put like that amount of effort into something I'm not passionate about, super difficult. Right. And the idea that you love will come, you know, even if it is a good idea, but you're not that passionate about it, don't necessarily bail on it. But something that you love, we, for instance, if you're new here, we sell travel products and the three of us that work on marketing and stuff all love traveling. So it's really easy for me to love our products. Um, Whereas other things that don't really relate to you, it's not as fun to talk about or sell or make emails for. Yeah. Doesn't mean it won't make you money, but it's way more fun if you like the, the product. Yeah. There, you can either make money by hating life or make money by having fun and not feeling like you go to work. And I choose Definitely. the latter. <laughs> yeah. My husband, Mitch, is he is the opposite. He's like, I just want to make money even if I hate it. And I'm like, mm. I want to love my job even if I don't make as much money. Yeah. So my husband's going to school to be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to mess with people's mouth. But 
I'm excited he's doing that because he's going to fix my teeth. Absolutely. Great. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hopefully he's good at it. So what if, like, how unique do ideas need to be? Do they need to be, like, brand new inventions? Or can, where's that line at, you know, of, like, ripping somebody off versus making it your idea? You know what's really interesting? A lot of products lately, I've heard my mom say, oh, we used to have something like this in the 80s. Interesting. So... It's been happening a long time, you know. It's um, it's not really that hard. Or let me back up. It's really easy to come up with something that already exists <laughs> and no idea is really that unique. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And like you said, there is this fine line of ripping people off or expanding on an idea that already exists or adding on to a product that already exists but making it better. But... How, what do you think? Where's the line of knocking someone off or just making the idea better? I don't know. It's this weird line, right? Because, yeah. You, Super hard. You kind of have to grasp the, or just accept that to some extent you will rip people off, right? Because if somebody makes a toiletry bag, for instance, there's so many people making toiletry bags. And by me designing a new toiletry bag, even though it's totally different than everyone else's, is still taking business from them and still ripping off the idea of organizing your toiletries, right? So right. to some extent, no matter what in business, I mean, 99.999% of the time, you're going to be making a watch, right? And there's already a bunch of watches out there. You're going to be making, like, you really depend on a lot of other people. Even designing our backpack, for instance. they. So this material, we literally went and... Here, let's see. I'll hold it up here. You can't really see it because it's black. But this material, we literally went to REI. We looked at all their backpacks. And we're like, hey, this is the bag we love. Cause we love this material. So then we bought that bag, cut it up, sent it to our man. Well, sent it to a few different manufacturers to try and find something really close to the ma that material. So was that ripping? It was a Hydro Flask backpack. Was that us ripping Hydro Flask off? No, because they didn't invent that material either. They found that material from a manufacturer. But at the same time, they're the ones that used it on a backpack. All that being said, we actually, I think it should note that we didn't find that exact material. We found a new material that was similar. So it's not like we ripped them off either. Yeah, and we also had certain things in mind that we wanted in a material. And the hydro flask material, it ticked a lot of boxes, but I think what we ended up with and it ended up being better for gravel. Totally. It's it's now part of our entire line and it's been really good to us. We haven't had any problems with it. We haven't had problems manufacturing with it and we haven't had problems um, with our customers. Nothing has ripped with this certain material. So it's worked out great for us yeah. and they just kind of led us in the right direction. So it's definitely worth finding something you love but making it better. Yeah, because we've also, with our toiletry bag, I mean, our toiletry bags pre-sold over a million dollars worth of of that product, our Plus did. And so we knew that we'd get some kind of rip-offs of some kind, but we had another brand. I won't say who the brand was, but they made our almost our exact toiletry bag. And they made some slight changes to it. So when we, they were our friends, so when we called them out, we I physically called them and I said, hey, what's going on guys you just launched like our exact to toiletry bag and they said no this is we we made this change and this change and this change so we didn't rip you off and it's like but your toiletry bag is more similar to ours than any other toiletry bag i've ever seen but they did make changes so it's like this weird balance of i do feel like that brand saw our product made something really similar on purpose and launched it and right. I do feel like I, we got ripped off by them, especially because they are our friend. But we also have friends in the industry that make backpacks that have similar layouts to what we made. Right. And maybe they feel like we ripped them off. So anyway, it's all like this just weird, weird balance of we've kind of gone on these weird tangents now in this weird direction. But like the overarching thought that I want like to take away from this is there's no such thing as unique ideas. Ideas are spun off of other ideas. So even if you have a really unique idea for a, a camera, 
that idea may have spun off of the microwave that you had growing up right. and how the buttons are laid out and you loved how the the buttons were on your microwave. So you applied that to your camera, right? And so obviously that's a stupid example, but your ideas, like any business that you have stems from other places. So the main balance is thinking, okay, I'm going to purposely not rip off this person, but I am going to be inspired by this person or this product or this idea within my product and idea. And that happens all the time. I mean, clothing companies are a really good example of that, right? Like new clothing companies pop up all the time or they change value or whatever. Like, Right. There's just always clothing companies coming and going. And it's literally the exact same stuff. Even yeah. down to like the brand of blank that they use. It's literally like the same stuff. But you're just creating new value propositions. So, right. I mean, like 10 or 15 years ago, Tom's came in and made this these shoes that were like a give back program. And no, I had never seen a company do that before. Right. So they're coming into a really saturated shoe market and creating a value proposition. Obviously, everybody's doing like give back programs now. So really, even if you have an idea, but it's just slightly different than what's already on the market, don't rip anyone off. I think it's important to like to be careful. Don't rip people off. But if you believe that your value proposition, the reason why a stranger would buy your product is different than what's currently on the market or you hit a different customer than what's currently on the market, then that's fair game. That's totally something you should go ahead. We talk a lot about launching your own business, launching your own product, but even if you're just the marketing person at your job, we like Lance and I, whenever we see an ad on Instagram that we love, we send it to each other. There is so much um, inspiration out there. And it snowballs our own ideas off of these ads that we see or pins on Pinterest or other products. It's really cool to say, we need to do something like this. And we're, we're not ripping them off, but inspiration is out there. For me, I try to scroll with purpose. That's something I've been telling myself, not just to passively mm -hmm. scroll. Scroll with purpose, look for ideas Ne not necessarily just business ideas. Um, it could be like scroll with purpose, see how my friends are doing. Scroll with purpose. What's our next email campaign for Gravel? Scroll with purpose. I want to buy a new dress, you know? So my new thing is to scroll with purpose. But especially when it comes to business, that inspiration is already out there. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Did you come up with scroll with purpose? Or where did you hear that? I think I heard it at church, but it was more so like looking out for people that need your help. But I'm like, scroll with purpose, that is out there for everything. It can, because we're all just scrolling all the time and it's so passive. I can't remember which TikToks I watched today, so I'm getting better at it. But <laughs> um, scroll with purpose and don't just be a zombie, you know? I actually love that a lot. And so obviously you talked about how we send ads to each other when we're scrolling with purpose. Yes. Uh, but another thing that I do a lot is I'll, I'll take screenshots of things. And then I have a folder on my phone called like ghost thoughts or something like that. I just like the word ghost. So I felt like I needed, I needed awesome. a brand and make my folder cool. But just name it, you know, ideas or name it whatever. And you can copy and paste your screenshots, your photos you take, anything into this folder. And then uh, obviously whenever you need inspiration for graphic design or inspiration for a business idea or product idea or designing anything, you can jump into that folder and all of a sudden... You have, you know, you can do color palettes. You can do different graphic design styles. You can do different fonts. You can do different cool product ideas that maybe just spark something in you. Uh, and you take that and run with it, you know? You have your own folder, which is great. We also have one on our Slack channel for Gravel. We don't use it as much, but we should. <laughs> but it's just like, hey, I like this. I think it be could be cool for Gravel. Another thing is there are some websites that do this for you. I am a huge believer of reallygoodemails.com. It's just compiled of so many different types of emails, whether it's e-commerce, restaurants, charities, just so many fun emails with fun email ideas that you don't want to rip off, but you can definitely take what you love from them and leave what you don't. So same Definitely. creating your own or using sites like that. There are a lot of ones like that for graphic design as well. I know dribble is one of them, like dribbling a basketball. That's one where a lot of graphic designers will publish logos and don't knock them off, but it can definitely spark some awesome ideas. Yeah, and I've talked about it in the past. I mean, 
how I got, I, I think it, we did a, a video on branding, but how I got the idea for gravel was literally somebody like a graphic designs post, a graphic designers post. He had created uh there was grass like coming up and he cut off the letters of that sentence. He wrote where the grass blades came up and all of a sudden I was like, Oh, that's cool. So then I kind of took, took that. And with the gravel logo, I cut off pieces of the gravel logo, not obviously where grass was going through, but right. just cut off pieces of it. And now we have the gravel logo. So I think it's extremely important to find what, really inspires you and surround yourself with it. So whether that's looking at the folder or trying to follow a bunch of people on Instagram or TikTok or whatever that really inspire you. I love the scroll with purpose though. I think that's money. Yeah. And then once you so have all good. these really good ideas, then you go into the research phase, which we talked about in our last episode. And it was really awesome because now that you have an idea, see who would buy it, see if it's already out there. That was a great episode. <laughs> Um, Rad. Well, I think we can wrap it up. We uh, don't want to beat a dead horse too much. <laughs> but overall, I think it's I think it's really important. Ideas are really where it comes from. But then, as my dad said, you're an, you're only an entrepreneur if you take that action. So once you have the idea, step forward, take a risk, get it done. This has been another episode of the Business in Real Life podcast. Uh, with Lance and Brooke. We're here to help you start your business. We launch these videos every Tuesday. So if you want to build your business, if you're just starting or want to build it larger, uh, give us a follow and uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday. See ya.